The economy is changing and so is our trust. We hop into strangers' cars and stay at strangers' homes. But how do people make ends meet through on-demand services like Uber and Airbnb? A U.S. Senator is asking federal agencies for help in making sure these workers get their fair shake. Alex Miller has a story from our exclusive D.C. Bureau. When he moved to a new city, Philip Harold had no idea he'd get to know the roads so well. Anywhere from 5 to 6, Monday through Friday, and that's in the morning during, uh, during the morning rush hour. And then I'll come back out in the evening. He's part of a new frontier in our economy. People who work for themselves, sort of. Harold drives full time for both Uber and Lyft. So while he technically works for a company, he doesn't get the same benefits as a regular employee. Senator Mark Warner is concerned for people like Harold when the rides stop coming. I'm worried about when things go bad and they have no safety net at all, they could end up back on the taxpayer dime on public assistance programs. Senator Warner says there's been a shift in how people work and the priorities of millennials aren't as cookie cutter as their parents. The idea that we would kind of simply reclassify everybody as an employee and try to fit a 20th century definition on a 21st century economic change doesn't work. Harold says he believes in this business, but until changes are made, he will need a different job. Harold is now studying to obtain his commercial driver's license and will then switch to using Uber for supplemental income. Reporting in Washington, I'm Alex Miller. The U.S. Government Accountability Office estimates anywhere between 5% and a third of American workers are involved in some form of contingent work. That's obviously a wide range. The U.S. Labor Department has not conducted a detailed survey on that kind of work in 10 years.